Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to be here this morning. I understand there's a little bit of rain in the south here yesterday. We were blessed. Um, I uh, was blessed to go to uh, Newton yesterday and come back safely. But let us uh, now uh, go to God in worship. Let us follow our call to worship. God of the ages, we sing your praises in the vineyards of our lives. And in the garden of our lives. Where we have become ragged and wild, fruitless in the way we should grow. Redemption the source of all our world. Let your hand be upon us, leading us to Jesus, the perfecter of our faith. He the roots of our faith. Bring us rain and drought. Shade and scorching heat, and protection in the wilderness. Protect the growth of our spirits. Amen. Together, let us repeat our opening prayer. Lord of the vineyard, we ask for your presence and your guidance. In your holy wisdom, tend the minds of our hearts. Teach us your righteousness, that our lives may flower with justice. We come to
joys and concerns this morning. You should be sharing with the sisters and brothers in Christ. I have something I want to share. I stopped by the children's home in Wichita to get a few more details on the project that we're working on downstairs, and they gave me some cards that I want everyone to have a card, because this card has a sign on it, and I don't know how many of you, when you're in Wichita, have any idea what the sign looks like a street sign, but it says it's a safe place. That means it's a safe place for the street children who have no place to go. And I was not aware of this. It's been in place for some time. But the quick trips, um, I knew that the quick trips let the kids go in and use the microwave in their bathrooms. But, um, I didn't know that this sign, when you're going into a, a place of business, just meant that that was a safe place for any teenager, any street child. So I want you guys to take these just to read what they have on here. But I thought that that was uh, an interesting piece of information. Let us 
Let us not have that. Are we ready? <coughs> Darby and Clay went to their basement in their house and they wrote this song. Wow. So this is their original composition. Wow. Words and music. <coughs> Johnson, who was in private hospice, and it was Becky and Dorothy Casting, who was at home. And all those who need to be reminded and a 
sure that Jesus Christ died for each and every one of us. Let us now go to God in prayer, or continue our prayer. Lord of the Vineyard, we come to this sanctuary today seeking your presence and your guidance. In your holy wisdom, tend to the vines of our hearts. Divine God, we try to grow happily, patiently, and faithfully in the soil you have prepared for us. We confess, O oh God, that it is, our, it is often easier to shut our eyes to the needs of others and close our ears to another's cry of pain. Our schedules do not lend themselves to time-consuming interruptions, nor do our hearts easily open to suffer with another. Lord, please be patient with us, we pray, and grant us strength as we follow the one who laid down his life for his friends. Let us lay down our lives by being present for each other. Let us lay down our lives by being still and listening to the voice that calls to us. That voice of Jesus says, come, follow me, come, for I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Thank you for the gift of your love which strengthens us and enables us to do more than we could ever imagine. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Eternal God, we have mentioned several names today, and yet there are others who need your care and your love and your comfort and your peace. We ask, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would dwell in the hearts of each and every one richly. Bless this congregation, send this congregation out into the world to do your will. Be merciful to each and every one of us. Bless our schools that will start uh, this week. Lord, we ask that uh, you bless our conference, which will be this week in Salina. Bless each and every one. Help them to get there safely and get back home safely. Help them to be a successful conference, all to the glory of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Bless each and every one of us, Lord, as we go about doing the will of God. Use us in your service. Bless all those in government above us. Bless the president, the cabinet, all those in charge of decisions made for our troops. May they bring our troops home safely, quickly, and expeditiously. Bless all the troops, Lord, wherever they are. Thank them for being of service to our nation. Be with us all. Send us out into the world to do your will. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. He taught us how to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Uh, please turn with me in your hymnals to hymn 511. Five, one, one. Am I a soldier of the cross?
I hope you follow those words carefully because that's the sermon. That is the sermon. I'd like for you to turn with me in your Bibles, and uh, we're going to see that in a second. The Hebrew, book of Hebrews, page 214, page 215, Hebrews 11, and 29, 29 through 12, 2. Hebrews 11, page 215 in the Q Bible. Listen carefully. And it says, the faith of the Israelites and Rahab and others. By faith, the people crossed the Red Sea. Chelsea's about to find out it's the Reed Sea, we call it the Red Sea, mm -hmm. as if on dry land. But the Egyptians, when they attempted to do the same, were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab the harlot did not perish with those who were disobedient, because she had given friendly welcome to the spies. And what more shall I say? The time will fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms and forced justice, received promises, Stopped the mouths of lions, quenched raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received their death by resurrection. Some were tortured, refusing to accept release, that they might rise again to a better life. Others suffered mocking and scourging even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sawn in two. They were killed with the sword. They went down in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, afflicted, ill-treated, of whom the world was not worthy, wandering over deserts and mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And all these though well attested by their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had foreseen something better for us, that apart from us they should not be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Now uh, this morning... From that, I, I want to address your attention to, and uh, this came from a song which kind of went like, keep on running, keep on running. Well, today, I want you to keep on running the race that is set before you. You have a race to run. And our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, has given you that race. Now, Hebrews chapter 11 and 12, which I just read, uh, the first two verses of 12, tells us of a great cloud of witnesses and directs us to look to Jesus Christ as our example. He's our hope. He's our role model. He's the one we look to. He's our redeemer. He is our great prize. That's Jesus Christ. Hebrews goes on to challenge us with examples of those who lived by faith. God wants us to live by faith. They negotiated life's injustices. And as Christians, we must live by faith. Uh, we sang just a few weeks ago, Faith of Our Fathers. Uh, 
we can grasp God's idea of how the world works. Now perhaps we can live blessed lives in response to that great sacrifice that God made for us. God sent God's only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross in our place for our sins. He did not have to die for himself. He died for you and for me. Now perhaps we can live those blessed lives in response to that sacrifice through Jesus Christ who was sacrificed, who was crucified, who died and was buried, and fortunately for us, he rose just for us. Hebrews named generations of prophets and martyrs who suffered for God's covenant. All those women and men are truly alive and gathered around us like that great crowd of witnesses. Like a crowd of witnesses at the stadium standing up, cheering, encouraging us on. They ran the race and they passed the baton on to us. And it now is our turn to run the race that's set before us. Abraham called the Christian life a journey. You could imagine God going to Abraham in Iraq and saying, I want you to walk over to uh, Israel. No Cadillacs, no, no, no chariots, none of that. Just get up, you and your family, from Iraq, walk all the way to Israel. Well, of course, you know, they, there were different names in those days, but... Uh, just giving you the modern names. Uh, Job called the Christian life a struggle. There was a man, the richest man in the world. He owned everything, all the trucking business. He was the biggest trucker in the world. And he had all these sons and daughters and lost them all, lost everything in one day. He called the life. A struggle. He never gave up. He lived by faith. Paul today uses, uses athletic metaphors and he speaks of running a race. And you can imagine right now the world, uh, Dorothy and I are fans of athletics. Uh, right now the world's uh, sports are going on, world championships. And you can imagine uh, us going there at the start of the 100 meters and we look and we see. Uh, Usain Bolt standing out there. And then we go to the 200 and we look and we see Usain Bolt standing up there at the start of the race. And we know what happened yesterday and on Friday. Uh, he just cleaned their plows. And he got the gold medals. He got a gold medal. In fact, he's now today, probably about now, running for his phone. Gold medal in Russia. Well, Paul talks about running a race. In 1 Corinthians 9, 24, he said, Do you not know that in a race, all the runners run? I mean, can you imagine the other guy is lining up with you saying, Paul? I wouldn't want to be one of them. Do you not know that in a race, all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Only one gets the gold medal. Run in such a way to get the prize. Well, as Christians, we could say uh, we will all get the prize. Uh, you see, God's races are a little different from the world's races. The first guy in across the line gets a gold medal, the second guy gets a silver, the third gets a bronze, and the others get, well, Thank you for being here. But in God's race, it's a little bit. And we can well say, what is my race? What would be my prize? Why am I running this race? What's it for me? What's in it for me? W-I-W-I-I. -I -I -I. What's in it for me? Well, your race may be the race of earthly trials. Your race may be the race of earthly pride. 
Some folks always win. No matter what, you know, Donald Trump's going to build another casino and uh, he's going to fly around in his helicopter and he's going to marry the next beautiful girl on the horizon. And, you know, some folks just win everything they enter. No matter what, he's going to get all the money. And us poor folks are going to go to his casino and throw our money in on the table or whatever it is. And he's going to collect it all. Some folks are always successful. Remember the rich fool? We spoke about him a couple weeks ago. Here was a man who was so successful, his crops were producing abundantly, his barns were full. He was so successful, never gave a thought to helping someone in need. And the Lord said, Thou fool, tonight your soul is required of you. Who will have you well? After this. Well, he didn't even have enough bars to store his grades. He was very successful here on earth. But he was headed for hell. A terrible place to be, to spend all eternity. Other folks struggled and struggled. You remember Job? He lost everything he had. Some of us are barely making it, barely getting by, but rich in the things of God. You know, the fastest uh, rising Christian churches today are in India and Africa and South America and places where people are dirt poor. We have no concept of what it is to live in places like Ayala and Jamaica. So those people just keep on struggling. But they receive a prize, just as we do, those of us who are Christians, the prize of seeing Jesus. We're told that absent from the body, that is when our spirits and our souls leave this body, when this body dies and is left behind in a coffin, in a, in a grave, when we're absent from the body, we are present with the Lord. So we become winners because of our faith. We put our faith and our trust in Jesus Christ. And he makes us a winner. And we receive the same prize that the winner, like you say in both does, we all receive a gold medal. By faith Moses, by faith Joshua, by faith Rahab, by faith Gideon, by faith Barak. By faith Samson, by faith Jephthah, by faith David, by faith Samuel, and all of the prophets, all human beings like you and me with our weaknesses, our frailties, all human beings with faults, all sinners, they accomplish great things through faith. And you too can get great things from God if you live. By faith. So what is this race Paul is asking us to run? Well, a race may be the race of earthly triumph where we are very successful in everything. Or a race may be a race of seeming defeat. On earth, a race may be seeming defeat. Let us read uh, verses, let me go back to verses 11, 35 through 38, Hebrews. Uh, once again, women received back their dead by resurrection. And others were tortured, not accepting their release, in order that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others experienced mockings and scourgings, yes, also chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn in two, they were tempted, they were put to death with the sword. They went about in sheepskins and goatskins being destitute, afflicted, ill-treated, men of whom the world was not worthy, wandering in deserts and mountains and caves and holes in the ground. These Christians were not very successful by our standards. Right now, there's a pastor, Saeed, who's been, who's been sentenced to eight years in a terrible 
dungeon prison in Iran. And what was his crime? He was arrested at an orphanage, a Christian orphanage in Iran, where he was trying to help children, where he was there preaching the gospel. His crime was he is a Christian, suffering terribly. So today the blood of Jesus Christ is there for him and is there to comfort us. Jesus Christ was crucified as a common criminal, just as Pastor Saeed is in Iran today. The blood of Jesus Christ can turn failure into faith. It can turn a sinner into a saint. Remember Paul and Silas, two Christian boys preaching out there? They were whipped and flogged. Their skins were just ripped raw with their whips and lashes. Not only were they thrown in jail, they were thrown in the center of the jail and put in stocks, all for preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. But I'm here to tell you, the Christian may be knocked down, but the Christian will never be knocked out. The Christian will rise again. Our enemy, Satan, may appear to be winning. I can just imagine when Paul and Silas was in the middle of the prison and they were in stocks and in chains. Satan was just rejoicing. Little did he know that midnight soon comes. Did he know that Jesus Christ would rock that prison and rock those chains off those boys and open the stocks and let them free? Our race may be a race of seeming defeat, but in Jesus Christ we are more than conquerors. Just hang in there. So the race we've been asked to run may be the race of earthly triumph and success. It may be a race of seeming defeat. But our race ends in the prize of Jesus Christ himself. That's where our race ends. We're not called to success. Jesus Christ calls us to be faithful. We as humans can only see as far as the horizon. Remember Columbus and all those Europeans? They looked and they saw a horizon over Europe. But Columbus said, now I'm going to get to the end of that horizon. And he kept going. And the further he went was the further the horizon went. The horizon kept moving on until he got to the U.S. And he got to, the, to uh, Trinidad and he got to the Caribbean. And, you know, he got to all the rest of the world. So we're not called to success, we're just called to sail on to the horizon. There is more world beyond the horizon that we can see. The Christian life is to live beyond the horizon, knowing that Jesus Christ is there beyond that horizon. I've been honored and blessed to do several <coughs> funerals, in, uh, especially here in Kansas. I'm blessed that uh, they've slowed down, uh, but I was honored. And the, the most popular hymn since I've been in Kansas has been Beyond the Sunset. <coughs> and I first came to Kansas, and that was a hymn for a funeral. I thought, wow, uh, we didn't do that over the East. <laughs> but then I began to examine the words beyond the sunset. And some of you probably know them. Beyond the sunset, oh blissful morning, when will our Savior heavens begun? Earth's toiling ended, oh glorious glory, Beyond the sunset, when day is done. Beyond the sunset, no clouds will gather, no 
storms will threaten, no fears alone. A day of gladness, a day on ending beyond the sunset, eternal joy. Beyond the sunset. And will guide me to God the Father, whom I adore. His glorious presence, his words of welcome, will be my portion on that fair shore. Beyond the sunset, oh glad reunion, with our dear loved ones who've gone before. In that fair homeland, we'll know no parting beyond the Just imagine reaching beyond the grave and seeing our loved ones, our fathers, our grandfathers, and mothers, and all those witnesses, those saints, those prophets who've gone before us. What a glorious day! And then the prize of all, the prize of Jesus. Being able to see him. As Christians, we know exactly, we know exactly what's ahead. We know beyond the horizon, we know beyond the sunset. We know what's the prize, we know what prize awaits us. If we already know that the prize is Jesus Christ, how should we run this race? When we get rid of everything that's holding us back, we throw off all the weights. Can you imagine Usain Bolt coming with a, a backpack of, of uh, rations and clothes and all of that, getting to the starting line? No, he throws it off. He wears a little t-shirt, a little singlet, <coughs> short little brief pants. You throw all those weights aside and you run the race with vigor. Knowing that you're doing it for Jesus Christ. We throw off every week. We remember we are in the cloud of witnesses who are there cheering us on. We anticipate joy. Ultimate joy. When we meet the object of our faith. Who is Jesus Christ. He is the one. He is the one who. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross. He knew you by name. He called your name when he was on that cross. And he asked you to come unto me by faith. I encourage you today to put your faith and your trust in Jesus Christ. I encourage you to keep on running. Keep on running. Run the race that is set before you. Keep on running. Please let us stand and repeat hymn number 881. 881. 881.
prayer of thanksgiving. And let us repeat it together. Loving God, we offer ourselves into your nurturing hands. Receive the emotions of our labors, the fruits of our minds, and all that we are and know, that we may make a difference in our homes, in our communities, and in our world. Receive these sacrifices as a pledge to live our lives. Through Jesus Christ, the pioneer and protector of our faith. Amen. Please be seated.
shine upon you, be gracious unto you. Lord, lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace now and forever. And all of God's children said, Amen. 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 Amen.